Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. This is my friends over at Joanne.com. Week number three, the halfway spot of your stitch along together. This is the Bernat Blanket stitch along with the festive afghan. We're moving on to this section right here. This so let's get started on week number three. So week number three has something really quite unique to it and what we are going to be doing is adding in a lot of extra stitches. This type of stitch has a lot of compression to it and so we are going to be expanding from our 80 stitches that we've been having to 103 and I, th I know what you're thinking. Wow that's a huge thing. This stitch has a lot of compression. So we're gonna be doing our setup row and if you look in the uh, diagram which I'll show you next you'll see that we are going to be increasing our our um, stitches. You'll also notice that we are going to be carrying our yarn. So you'll notice how the lines go straight up. Now if you have to trim your yarn every time you're finishing one of these you're gonna end up with a lot of tails. So what the designer is recommending is that we carry the yarn that is not in use over top of the stitch. So when the white is being crocheted in the orange there is just being carried underneath the stitches so that you can see it. So if you look at, see right here that's the yarn being carried underneath. So you want to make sure it's nice and taut, not too loose, but not too tight either so that it changes its um, its um, flexibility. So we're gonna be doing that today. So let's take a look at the diagram. So the diagram here kind of shows us what we're going to be doing and you're going to notice is that we have uh, a repeat that we are going to do. So it's uh, setup rows number one and two and you see that this is an increase row. So in row number one we're going to be increasing our stitches a certain amount of time. So you see how that there's two single crochets here in a row and one, one single or one chain here. That should technically have a space but because we're gonna increase our stitches that's what's gonna happen and you can see that happens right in the very beginning as well. So we're gonna be diving hard into that today too. We have two rows to start with this one here. So one and two and we will be using the white, the vintage white and this will create a border on the other side of this when we get up, up over here. So then we're going to make sure that we have uh, this pattern here. We're working in the back loop only to create the ridge look and then what we're going to do is that we're gonna do an increase row and this is going to massively expand the amount of stitches so that this particular stitch work can work together. This type of stitch work has the tendency to compress so the designer has figured out all the extra stitch work to put in here to keep it in balance up through the sides. So without further ado let's start on row number one and uh, let's pick up our project and let's begin. So let's begin row number one and we're gonna be working in the back loop only for this one. So chain up one and we still wanna bury in our two yarn strands that we have and we wanna come in the first one. It's a single crochet and just slipping down the back loop. So if you're looking at the stitches you will see two strands. The first strand is the front loop, the second is the back loop. And so what I want to do is just scoop up underneath these stragglers and then get the back loop only. It's kinda harder to see on camera than it is in person. The color has a lot to do with that as well. And of course I pulled the stitches nice and tight from what I did this last time. So okay, so let's. Okay, so now we're in the back loop. So just pulling through and through. So continuing all the way down, just take this straggler about two inches across. So back loop it. The first one's always kinda a little tough and then just go and back loop all the way down and this will create a nice new section for your particular afghan. So back loop, double our single crochet all the way down. Okay, now that we're on the other side, go right into the last stitch and turn your work and we'll turn now and I'll just start number two and this is going to be framing this particular section. Okay, row number two, we're just gonna chain up one and then just do one single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way across. When you get all the way across, I don't want you to fasten off at all. Just keep this white going and then we're gonna do the setup rows in order to do the fun work that you see within the section. So just please put in one single crochet in each all the way to the end. So we're all the way to the other side and now we're just gonna turn her over. You should be looking at the front side so your bobble should be popping up. And now let's go back to the diagram because now we're gonna do an increase row that is gonna allow the other part of this to be able to compress properly within this afghan. So let's go to the diagram now. So if you look really carefully here you will notice here that technically it should be like in like a straight line here but it's not. So when we go to chain up two that counts as your first single crochet and a chain one space and single crochet in the next. Chain one and then single crochet here. So what I want to show you here is that there's gonna be three sets. So one, two and three where the single crochets are directly beside each other without a gapping space in between. 
Then after those three sets we chain up one, skip one, single crochet into the next, chain one, skip one and then another three sets in a row and we're gonna repeat that all the way across and this is what's gonna increase us as we go. Okay so now let's work this out and let's go slowly together. We're going to chain two and that counts as your first single crochet and your chain one and you're gonna come immediately to the next stitch here and single crochet and then chain one and now the next uh, sets of three are all gonna be the same. So you're just gonna skip the one stitch and go to the second over and single crochet, chain one and single crochet directly next to it. Then chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one and then single crochet in the next one after that. So this is the second set of the three. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one and then single crochet in the next. So that was your three sets all together. So you have one, two and three. I know it's hard to see on camera but it's there. So now what you got your three sets, chain up one, skip one, single crochet in the next and this is part of your repeat pattern. So let's go through a repeat one more time. So you're gonna chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one and go immediately to the next one. Okay, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one, single crochet in the next. Okay, that was the second set of, of uh, three. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one and single crochet in the next. And this is the end of the repeat so chain one and then skip one and single crochet in the next. So you're just gonna keep repeating that all the way across and then essentially it's just one single crochet, skip one and then they're just sets in, in, in pairs of like three if you look at it from the diagram point of view. Please do that all the way. Just look at the diagram, go, uh, go slowly and then make sure you have your counts right at the end. So we're coming all the way to the end of the, the section on this uh, side here and I'm just gonna start the repeat. So I've got single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next, chain one, single crochet in the next. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next and chain one, single crochet in the next. So at the very final two here you'll notice in the, in the, um, for, in the diagram is that you're gonna chain one, skip one and the last two stitches are the same. So single crochet, chain one and single crochet. So you're gonna feel like it's wrong in every level but it's not. But what I want to do before we uh, continue on with this is that just back out one and I want you to get your orange ready and we're gonna be begin to do that and then we're gonna be alternating and this is a really new, a unique technique I'm about to show you and it's something that's really inspired me for another project. So let's get our leaf orange ready. I'm just gonna create a slip knot and I'm gonna put it on. Do not get rid of the white. You're gonna keep this white on because this is a technique I've never seen done before. So just pull through. Let's just turn our project now and then let's go back to the diagram and let's review. Now we're on setup row number two as you can see here and so we're going to be coming up with our orange and then filling in these spaces. So this is going to stabilize it then for the rest and you'll notice that the project will start to condense and it will match the side of the project that you'll see. So what we want to do is that we want to just alternate between the orange and the white and we do not fasten off at the end of each of these rows. We keep it and we drag it across and I'm gonna show you how to hide the color as well uh, in a previous row that we're gonna do. Let's go back to the main uh, photograph because it's something I wanna show you because it's really quite easy when you see it. So when you look at the diagram from this point of view, do you see the orange? There is a number of orange rows. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you have your seven done, just like you see here, then that's when I'm gonna pick you back up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the next one and then I'm gonna show you how to hide the colors and I want you to keep on going until you see seven of these. It also gives you a measurement of I believe nine inches so that you wanna carry it over so that you're gonna keep it going um, as we're working this way. So it'll be nine inches uh, from this particular point. So for the first row. So let's uh, continue along and I'm just gonna concentrate what's here in the diagram. So I wanna get my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these rows of the orange in and then I'll pick you back up at the end of that. So I'm gonna show you something really neat here. So let's begin. We're gonna always chain two and I'm not gonna worry about the stragglers yet. So just chain two and then we'll start. 
So you skip the first single crochet and you go right into the chain one space that is created underneath. Grab the stragglers, straggler and then this white that is going right to the yarn ball. So you don't wanna cut that at all. And you just wanna scoop up underneath into the single crochet space and single crochet right around all of that. And then chain one and then come to the next chain one space and see I'm gonna scoop up around it all. Now you're just gonna do that all the way across. So chain one and single crochet. Now it can really look sloppy when you see this being dragged and I'm gonna show you how to hide this even better so that it's barely even noticeable in your project. So you're just chaining one and then just jumping to each of the chain one spaces and as soon as that the orange is dragged far enough you can hide it. Now you're kinda worried that how it's gonna look now. Don't worry about it. We're gonna show you how to do that. So just continue along and chain one single crochet into each of the spaces and I'll see you at the end of this row. Don't forget to keep dragging that white all the way with you. So just rest it on top. If it's hanging out the back or being really sloppy just tug it a little bit but don't over tug it so that it changes the um, the flexibility of your afghan. Okay so just do that all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming all the way across and I'm still dragging my weight across as, as I go. I've never done that before. I think it's kind of cool. Um, I've done another sample since I've learned how to do this uh, with this sample and it looks amazing uh, even with doing different yarns. So chain one and then you come into the last chain one space and that's where you're gonna end. So come in but before you pull through the um, orange let it drop and then just grab the white that is coming from the ball. It's easier if the balls are in different locations. So I have the white one this way and then the orange one is that way so that the um, st uh, yarn strands don't tangle. So I'm just gonna pull through. So I'm gonna turn my project now and then I'm gonna show you how to hide in this carrying yarn that we've been hiding in or been uh, um, putting in there. So let's turn our work and let's begin that. Okay so now I want to carry my orange across the top and I want to work with the white. So get the white up and ready and I want you to chain two, one and two. So that always be the same. And our first stitch is in this chain one space that you see. But do you see how this strand here is just kind of hanging out on its own? You see it once in a while? That's what I want you to bury in. So it's a really great technique that I'm about to show you. So I want you to scoop up underneath the orange Okay, so just capture it on, scoop up underneath that carrying yarn and go right through the project. And then pull through and then single crochet as normal. And what that's doing is it's holding that carrying yarn but it's also picking up that other yarn and putting it underneath so it's really well hidden. So chain one, skip to the next one. So do you see the carrying yarn? Just scoop up underneath through it, through the project and just it's picking it right up. So chain of one. So pick a scoop and pick up the uh, carrying, uh, the carrying yarn and then make sure the orange is on top. If at any time you turn around and you realize that you've left this one behind you will have to backtrack to um, pick it back up. So keep going into that chain one spaces with this yarn and what this is doing is that this is actually num row number one of the repeat pattern. So sometimes the straggler yarn can be down here. So just pick it up and going in and it will pull it up into the stitch. And then it's really well hidden. So do that all the way across and I'll see you there and we'll turn one more time. We'll try, uh, restart with the orange because now the orange is being dragged and when you look at behind you will see the carrying yarn here and I will show you how to hide that. It's the same thing but I will just make sure that you understand that one more time. So get to the end and then we'll turn and then we'll change over our yarn colors but do not fasten off this course. So if you remember this is when we started the orange and I said not to worry about it until now. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna just chain up one and as I scoop up that carrying yarn I wanna scoop up that orange one as well at the same time and keep that orange lying on the top. So just scoop it all up into the same one and it will suck all in together. So you see the orange is being carried so is the white and that. So just going in and just capturing it and it pulls it up underneath. Pretty cool right? Okay so we're gonna come all the way to the end, chain one and you're gonna come into the final um, chain one space. So as you finish that one you're gonna drop it and then bring up your orange and pull through and then turn our work and I'm just gonna get you started on this row and then I'm gonna leave the rest of this section for you and then I'll be back at the end. So remember what I said you have to go nine inches or just look and do seven of these 
rows here of the orange. So this is row number two of the orange that you'll see. So now you're just gonna chain up two as always. So just like it, if it was white and then I want you to just scoop this white one and the carrying yarn is right there. You see it? Just scoop up underneath that to capture it to pull it upward and then single crochet. So chain up one and just pull this white one a little bit tighter and then move on. So if you, you see, see I'm just using my finger and pushing you can actually see the carrying yarn. Sometimes the yarn can be um, directly in front and some like here it's in front. So I just have to look for it and make sure I capture it. If you don't capture it you will notice it later. I can guarantee you that. So capture it and be done with it. So just going across. So where is it now? So if I pull this one up I know this one is. See how I pull this one up and I can see that it's moving here. That is the carrying yarn and I'm just going to single crochet. And usually once I start pulling that one it'll be very obvious where the next one will be when you start pulling on things like that. So you what you wanna do is you just wanna continue up. So I'm gonna pull cause I'm not sure and you see how it's moving the others? That's the same one. So if it's attached to a stitch it won't pull like that. So that's a really good indication. So make sure you take in your weight with you as you're going and then you'll just switch back at the other side. So what I want you to do is go back and forth and you will just have all these rows line up to you and I want seven of these um, orange done and then we're gonna meet back here and then we'll continue on to the end of the clues. And you will notice that this here will start compacting in so your edging will line up uh, once it gets to a certain level it'll start compacting. So let's see at the end of this uh, clue and we'll finish up the final rows together. So once you get to your nine inches that's it. So you're done. So I have that done. I'm going to release the leaf orange now and we are going to go once across then just with the regular vintage white. So that's our next goal. So this is now getting beyond the repeat pattern and etc. So I'm just going to leave this hanging for now. I don't know what I'm doing but I'm just going to drag it underneath the stitches like I had been before. So we're gonna turn our work and begin the next row and this is part of the repeat pattern. So let's move along to the next row as we're gonna start decreasing in order to bring the stitches back to where we had started when we were right here. So I had the designer step in and help me. I'm a professional crocheter and educator but some things I get confused on and the pattern is not wrong. The diagram is not wrong. It's just for myself. I was just really confused by the number of repeats that was going on. So I was confused by trying to get 103 stitches back to 80 stitches as a suggesting and that's because I was misreading the pattern and the diagram. We're gonna start off chain one and they're gonna single crochet in the first chain one space. Now the bracket here you're going to repeat that a total of seven times. But when you're in the bracket and you see the written words you will see that there's two single crochets in a row and then it will give you this instruction. So single crochet in the next single, skip the next chain one space and single crochet in the next single crochet and chain one space. It will tell you to repeat that a total of three times. So you see one, two and three. Once you have those three done the main bracket here is done. So this is the asterisk that's telling you to re revert back to. So when you start the ne next bracket you're just gonna start off just like you said, uh, like you see the designer has indicated just to show me how this is working and then eventually you'll come to the very end of the project. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna take our time in getting this done and you will notice that every time we're doing these chaining uh, like these three sets here you're removing one extra stitch. So, uh, so this chain one here here and here get removed. So each time you do the repeat. So seven let you see here will take you to three. So that will give you 21 stitches that it will take out and then because you're skipping the first one and the last one that removes you to 23 which gives you back to 80. Hopefully that makes sense and let's uh, do this. I'm gonna be working slowly as we work our way across on this. It's an important row. So let's begin the decrease row. I'm gonna take my time in this one either because I need to take time for myself anyway to comprehend this as well. So there's nothing wrong here with the pattern. It's just a matter of just doing what it needs to do. So the straggler we're gonna keep down on top of the line so that we can get that stuck underneath. I would also continue, see how these were the carryovers? I would continue to get those stuck into position as well. So let's start off and we're going to chain up one and we're gonna skip the first single crochet that is here and just grab your materials here and also the carrying strand and you are going to single crochet into the next four stitches. So or sorry let's just say one. So just and it's a chain one space. 
So you're gonna single crochet there. So now this is the beginning of a repeat. So here we go. The first two are gonna be one into the single crochet that's existing. So the next one here is single crochet in the chain one space. So this is now the brackets is right from here, the single crochet and the chain one space. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to start one of the three of the repeats. So the next single crochet here is that it's gonna be a single crochet and the next chain one space I'm going to skip. The next single crochet is a, is a single crochet and the next chain one space is also a single crochet and that's one of three for the repeat. So let's go again. So we have to do that two more times. So let's begin. The next single crochet is a single crochet. The next chain one space we're gonna skip. The next single crochet is a single crochet and the next chain one space is a single crochet. And now that was the second of three repeats. Here we go again. So the next single crochet is a single crochet. The next chain one space we're gonna skip. The next single crochet is a single crochet and the next chain one space is a single crochet. So this here from the, from the one section, okay, right from here to here is one bracket. So let's do one more bracket together and then I'll rely on you to do the remaining. So let's go look at the brackets. So we're going to start up the next two. So it's gonna be the single crochet and the chain one space is a single crochet like that. The next one here is now we're going to start the repeat pattern. So and it's the three repeats. So it's going to be the next single crochet and we're gonna skip the next chain one space and the next single crochet and the next chain one space. So that was one of three. So let's do the second of, th of three. So it's gonna be the single crochet, skip the chain one space and go to the next single crochet and then go to the chain one space. So that was number two of the repeat. Okay, so let's do the third one. So it's the next single crochet, skip the next one, single crochet into the next and into the next chain one space. And now you're just gonna repeat the brackets all over again. So this is here, I want you to just take your time make, making sure that you're looking across. Uh, freeze frame that other um, sheet that I showed you if you need to and it will help you greatly as you work your way across. So hopefully you took your time. I want you to double check to make sure that you have 80 stitches on here. If you are off like one or two, I would try to like put two together or etc. If it's, if it's that bothersome for you, just restart and try again. So just make sure you get yourself to 80 because it does matter for your next uh, set of clues. So we're going to do one more row going all the way across and then we are going to be finishing off clue number three for today. So let's turn our work and begin. So I'm coming up to the end of clue number three. In the last stitch we want to make sure that we're gonna put in our deep C. Get ready for clue number four as we begin then and uh, that's all good to go. So let's get in there and just put your deep C on and take care of any loose ends that you will have at the end of this clue. Therefore you'll be ready for a fresh start. So now your deep C is on and I will see you next time as we're continuing our crochet along together with you. So let's uh, continue and we'll see you again real soon. So that's it for now. Week number three is actually a really easy once once you get the idea and once you get it started. So I really like this stitch. It really is quite fabulous. I've used it more often than I can imagine. And I think that you'll enjoy learning this stitch if you haven't already learned it before to be able to use it elsewhere. So we'd love to see your creativity, of course, on our social media. Please use our hashtag of Handmade with Joanne and we would just love to see how you're making out. We'd love to see your colors and a lot more. Of course, if you need advice, the community is there in order for you to have some advice given to you as well. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of my friends over at joanne.com as well as myself here at The Crochet Crowd. We'll see ya and have a good day.